Well, Cyclone Yazi has unleashed its fury on North Queensland. And while the worst might be over, this, the system is still threatening towns inland. Cairns residents have been allowed to return home to inspect the damage. But the Queensland Premier Anna Bly says the situation is still dangerous and she's urging residents not to be complacent. Let's take a look at how things unfolded last night. The Category 5 storm crossed the coast near Mission Beach just before midnight local time, packing winds of up to 285 kilometres an hour. Early this morning it was downgraded to a Category 2 storm as it continued westwards towards Georgetown. And in its path now is Mount Isa. Yazi is expected to hit the city unbelievably as a Category 1 cyclone tonight. Here's a look at the situation as it stands now. There have been no reported deaths or serious injuries, but thousands of people have been left homeless in Yazi's wake. 180,000 homes and businesses are still without power, and farmers are facing significant losses. So this is the situation here tonight in Tully. Dozens of homes and businesses have been torn apart. This was actually the Tully and District Senior Citizens Centre. It was one of the evacuation centres, believe it or not, planned evacuation centres. Evacuees turned up here yesterday morning, took one look at it and said, I don't think that's such a good idea going into that building. So everyone moved to another centre. It turns out that was a pretty good, pretty good call. Now, ABC reporter Paul Lockett yet takes a look at how Tully weathered the storm. For a full 12 hours, the people of Tully huddled in their homes or any shelter they could find as the cyclone roared through the town. It disintegrated around them. Street by street, the images tell the story. Amid the wreckage of homes and businesses, trees plucked out of the ground or stripped bare by the gale force winds. Oh, terrible terrible, never seen anything like it in my life. I've been through Winifred and Larry and all the forecasts were very good and they let us know it was going to be pretty terrible and it lived up to what the expectations they had. Outside town, the disastrous site of flattened banana crops. Most of Australia's bananas are grown here and the crop destruction is on a scale of that of Cyclone Larry five years ago. As the cyclone swept across the farming land to Tully, it left coastal communities in ruin. At Port Hinchinbrook, a marina, now a multi-million dollar junkyard. Boats smashed together by the force of the wind and the storm surge. A trail of destruction that swept 20 kilometres from the coast to bring all its force to bear on one town. Here in Tully, which felt the full force of the cyclone, what's remarkable is that there isn't even more damage to the buildings here. Even more remarkable, no reports of any casualties. Two of the survivors, Ross and Margaret Sabello. And Ross, how did you survive the night? Well, I think it was a miracle. I certainly do. Uh, as, the, as the full force uh, took over and we had to come down and shelter, um, the roller door blew out and, we, and the only safe refuge then was in a, in a vehicle. So, yes, it was, I think it was sheer luck more than anything. Yes. So you spent the entire night in the vehicle? Yes, we did, and we even had to change vehicles because the, the rear um, uh, blind, what is it, the rear roller door blew out and then the front one blew out, and when the both blew out, um, we had to jump from a Camry to a Hilux and back, and back up to the, to the door to, to stop it from blowing, blowing open. So, and that's where we stayed from about 3 o'clock onwards. How terrifying was Terrible. the wind? Very, very terrifying, very noisy, and um, we could hardly uh, hear ourselves, you know, talking, hear um, each other talking, and uh, it was just so loud. Frightening, terrible. I don't want to go through that again, ever. <laughs> well, were there moments there, Margaret, where you wondered whether you'd get out of it yes, alive? Yes, yes, a couple of times, yeah, yeah. Because of those doors, if they'd have hit us or um, let go when we were changing vehicles, would have been the end.